Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue working through the NPCs of Stardew Valley. Last video we talked about Vincent, who I think is one of the least exciting villagers in the game. No offense to the little dude, but he just kind of seems to exist in the valley as window dressing. This time we're going to switch it up a little and talk about my favorite non-marriage candidate in Pelican Town. It's finally time to cover the last member of the illustrious adventuring group YRP, or whatever, I don't know what they called themselves. Let's start with the basics here. Linus lives in a tent in the mountains north of town. He spends his days wandering around the mountain map, only really leaving the area to go to the spa or to attend the various festivals in town. I mean, he obviously goes to other places while we're not looking, since he is one of the people who can find you passed out, whether that's in the mines, at the volcano, or even just wandering around your own farm at 2 a.m. And of course, we see Linus in town at night digging through the trash during an event that only requires 50 heart points and a week of gameplay to fire. Linus can also send you catfish, fried calamari, or maki rolls in the mail, among other things. And we know he's not getting, you know, those fish or those ingredients from the mountain, despite what his letter says. So yes, Linus is mostly reclusive and hides out up north, but he does get around a little bit during the night. On a closer examination though, I have two of kind of my favorite parts of Linus's schedule that I'd like to highlight. First, every single day in spring, summer, and fall, rain or shine, Linus will go to the bush outside his tent at some point and spend some time just standing there. He stands there usually for about 10 to 30 minutes each time, which, I mean, he's going to the bathroom, right? Linus is the only person in the game who has time scheduled for himself to use the restroom, and I just think that's neat. But also, Linus stops using his toilet bush in the winter. He either stops using the restroom entirely for an entire season, or more likely he just uses the restrooms at the spa that he normally ignores. Why? Can you imagine programming an entire game and saying, you know what, this guy specifically needs to go poop in the bush every day. These are the little touches that take Stardew Valley over the top for me. And also, where does it all go? Did he dig a pit back there? Is it like a little latrine? I don't, I gotta stop. I'm sorry, let's move on. Throughout the game, Linus will open up to the player and explain that he's very at peace with his lifestyle. He doesn't want to exploit the land for profit or to build a permanent residence when he could just live freely and experience a more transient state of being. He exemplifies the kind of peaceful return to nature that the game seems to thrust us into at the beginning. We, the farmer, came to the valley to escape the grind of everyday life that we experienced working for Joja, but did you, the player, end up living a relaxing life like Linus, becoming one with the land and respecting it for its bounteous giving? Or did you monetize every square inch of the land you inherited from your family? That kind of generational transfer of wealth and resources is why we have so much inequity in our world, so I hope you're giving back to the community. Oh, okay, sorry. Almost lost my point there. So Linus is kind of a hippie, right? He talks about giving thanks to the fish when you catch them, and listening to nature's wonderful tune, and learning the secrets of the trees. Yeah. My question is, is Linus like a druid hippie, or is he like a Woodstock hippie with a secret corporate identity that he's running from? Or both? Let's start with the more fun, whimsical, magic-y part. Linus seems to understand the dangers of the mines quite well. He tells you that he's explored deep in the caves and that they hold hidden secrets. He spends many festivals near or with the wizard, and he seems to communicate with nature in a way that no one else in the valley can. Unless you count the farmer who, I will remind you, can speak with nature spirits. None of this specifically indicates that Linus is magical, but you have to admit that it's very druidic to speak with the plants and animals to live off the land while still protecting the people who don't really believe in your way of life. I think Linus was part of the adventuring group involving Marlin, Rasmodius, and M. Jasper prior to M. Jasper slash Mona's death, and I think that loss pushed him away from the valley for a time. I think he tried to make a difficult change in his life after that shock. It was time for something completely different. You see, there's still a sprite in the character files that shows Linus dressed a little differently than we're used to. He's obviously younger, which is cool and interesting, and he appears to be wearing a formal suit of clothing of some kind. It's not as obviously evil as Morris's cloak, but I really think Linus looks like he'd fit in perfectly in a board meeting with corporate executives. And honestly, that is my theory, as spoiled by myself, 
many times. I think Linus was one of the original founders of Joja. I think he started things up with Grandpa and Mr. Key, but eventually turned away from this monstrosity that he created to go live in nature. As he toiled away at this empire of consumerism, he had something of an epiphany. He was right the first time, back when he was a protector of the valley. By this point, though, he had already done so much damage to the world. So now he lives in a sort of self-imposed exile, as penance for what he sees as a horrible crime against nature. Not everyone in the valley appreciates Linus's nomadic lifestyle, though. In spring, Linus will tell you that someone has destroyed his tent before, and that he had to wait in his tent while people threw rocks at it in the night. He still says that the people here are nice, though, just that they're afraid of the unknown. Throughout the year, you hear less about people lashing out at Linus. Summer, in particular, seems to be a happy time for him. Through the whole season, he never speaks up about anyone messing with his stuff. When we get to fall, though, someone spray paints his tent, which is strange, since we never really see spray paint in the game, other than on the trains that sometimes pass through the valley. I would be surprised if anyone from the valley was responsible for spray painting the railroad cars, but there are only a few people who travel to the spa area with any kind of regularity. In the summer, Abigail goes up there, in the winter, Linus and Alex both go to the spa, and in the fall, it's again Linus, but also Sebastian. So who is the culprit? Abigail? Alex? Sebastian? I'm not a betting man, but I do have my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments, though. Anyway, despite the fact that at least one person in the valley has misgivings about Linus, he still wishes to maintain his lifestyle. When you achieve eight hearts with Linus, you can exit Robin's house on a sunny day between nine and five, and encounter a scene where Robin maybe voices some of the thoughts about Linus that many players have had at some point. She offers to make him lunch, which he refuses as he's been able to get some good forage that day. Robin seems to kind of want the player to take point on this. We might be thinking that this is kind of like Pam's situation. Maybe Linus would be happier with um, a little bit of a change to his you know, lifestyle, to his living situation. We've already become very close by this point. Maybe it would make sense to ask him to come live on the farm. I know I would love, personally, if I could hire out some work to people like Shane or Sam after finishing the community center, or to Linus, really, at any point. It would be interesting to have an NPC farmhand, but that's really not what Linus wants out of life. You can get a heart with Linus simply by accepting his lifestyle as different than yours and acknowledging that that's okay. And also, it's not that Linus can't afford to like buy a house if he wanted to. I mean, he's just as likely to pay you three times the market value for a diamond as anyone else in town. He obviously has the money, the Joja money. He simply lives the way he does because he wants to. He doesn't want for much. He can live off the land, taking full advantage of his free time to kind of come to an understanding about his place in the universe. He holds no resentment against people who want to live a more industrious or industrial lifestyle, and he doesn't blame those who misunderstand his own. While he starts a little defensive, he comes to appreciate the farmer simply for accepting him. I really like Linus. I think he made some decisions in his past that he's running from, and maybe he'll never confront those mistakes, but he's living a very sustainable life with compassion for the environment and respect for the community he stays in. He has his own place in the valley, and there is a big change for Linus when another inhabitant moves here. But we'll talk about that next time. What do you think about Linus? Is he the best character in the valley, or do we need to square up? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next video.